we were involved right from the outset as one of the pilot authorities for Neighbourhood Plan. Um, and we, we met with DCLG, we met with the ministers, and although neighbourhood planning itself is just another word for community engagement, something that in Birmingham we've been doing since the, the 1970s, 1980s with the Urban Renewal Programme, the thought of, of, of giving away the, the responsibility for, for spatial plan preparation to the people who live in the area sounded a bit rad radical. It wasn't in Birmingham, but you, I'm sure that a lot of other authorities would have felt this was a major departure from the way they normally do things. But we've always had the attitude that the people who know best about the area are the people who live in the area. And if we can help them to put a spatial dimension to their community, social aspirations, then that's got to be the way forward. I think neighbourhood planning, in the in the eyes of the government, was to to apply unilaterally across across England. It does it works far better in rural areas where there are parish councils leading the process. Partly because you've got a democratic body already elected that can take control and can sort of take, take control of the process. Rural communities are far better defined than urban communities. Most of the um, most of the, the, the neighbourhood plans in the shires are based on parish parish boundaries. So you may, might have two or three settlements within a parish boundary, but it, there is an identity. In Borsal Heath, when we we split a ward in two, effectively along community boundaries, but within that community, when we actually assessed it, people identified with five different neighbourhoods within the neighbourhood planning. Now, there is a general consensus of what should happen, but in individual areas, there are completely different views. Um, and there was a bit of a turf war right at the outset when the area was being designated. One of the there was a logical spur that went down one of the major roads um, because it, it was an economic area it reflected the sort of needs and, 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 and requirements of local people, but it was in a different neighbourhood area, and that led to some quite some quite considerable discussions. Um, in Borsal Heath, there has been a years of community activity and years of consultation to the point where people are saying just get on with it don't don't consult with us anymore just just do it we want to see real change in areas that, that haven't had that community level of, of, of involvement um, the learning curve will be more gradual but you do need to take the community with you Community groups themselves will have very able, very capable people within them. Not necessarily planners, um, but, but people who've got a grasp for and a skill for producing written documents. Others are very good at doing consultation. And it's it's if if you if the, the community groups function well, it will be because they have. Of, I've got the skills from the variety of people within the 21 or however many people in the, in the neighbourhood forum or within the parish council. Um, what, what we did find in Borsal Heath and in Mosley, given the length of time you've had in consultation in Borsal Heath and the, the demographic in, in Mosley, actual policy writing was very difficult. They knew what they wanted to say. But because these documents have to be in the, set in the context of national and local planning policy, you can't say certain things. So you have to you have to bear in mind that this will be read and interpreted both by by landowners, land developers, and solicitors and QCs.
if you don't have short-term, medium and long-term elements to the plan, to say how the houses are going to be delivered, how the railway line or the railway station will be, will be developed or where it could be developed, then the, the plan is fairly meaningless. And when you come to review the plan in 5 years, 10 years, 15 years' time, because the life of them it, it is 15, 20 years, you're able to sort of reflect on, you wanted this, this was the justification for it, we said this in the plan, this is what we've delivered. And then people can see that the whole process was actually worth the, the, the long-term involvement and the agony and the grief and the arguments and the late nights. It, it does need to be speeded up. Um, I don't think, I don't agree that it should be speeded up uh, legislatively, where the government insists, oh, this needs to be determined in X, this needs to be sorted by that. But the whole process does need, it, it needs a level of urgency. For two reasons. One, the people who are involved in writing it. 21 members of the neighbourhood forum will dwindle very quickly um, and the community who you are actually looking to consult with, they, they, the attention span is, is limited. You know. Weren't we talking about this 18 months ago? What have you done in 18 months? Well we've been following the process. The, the government has identified through through locality. It is it is small beer when you exp Joe Holyoke when we first started to do Bolsal Heath. Um, I said so. Let me get this straight in my own mind. You're expecting the community to produce what you or consultants would produce for no money. So, well, that's not what we want to do, Joe, that's what the government wants to do. Yeah. He says, well, that seems very iniquitous. Yeah. Yeah. 